Hello everyone, I am excited to present our work on RUM, Reconfigurable Umbrella Mesh. This is a work done with Florin, Saichi and Mark at Geometric Computing Laboratory, EPFL. A deployable structure that we are all familiar with at a large scale is the roof of a stadium. It deploys to open or close depending upon the weather. Here is a different scenario where a compact structure is transported and deployed to insulate a swimming pool depending upon the season. A more ubiquitous example is a pop-up camping tent that can be rapidly deployed when needed but takes little space when packed. Broadly, deployable structures employ various transformation mechanisms to morph their shape towards specific shape goals. Just using wooden bars and simple joints and an easy assembly process, the Taurus 4 Pavilion is an example of a lightweight structure that rises from the need for versatile modulated spaces for temporary events. While the ease and speed of deployment is one desired feature, the shape of deployment is of great interest too. While the Hoberman sphere has a simple spherical shape, other deployable structures focus on freeform surface structures. Exploring the design shape space and coming up with inverse design solutions is an active research problem. In this rich domain, most deployable structures are built for a very specific shape. The fabrication geometry is adapted to that specific instance. For example, if you take a grid shell, the lengths of the beams and the joint positions are all specific to the current deployed shape. If one were to deploy to a new shape, one needs to fabricate new beams and reassemble them. P present Reconfigurable Umbrella Mesh or RAM. RAMs are deployable structures with a compact state. In addition to being obviously deployable, a single RAM can be reconfigured to deploy into several desired shapes. Here, the same RAM's compact state is reconfigured to deploy into a flat surface or a dome or a negatively curved shape. RAMs are assembled with identical cells that can be mass fabricated and assembled as per need. Each individual unit is reconfigurable. The compact state is stress-free. This makes fabrication, assembly and reconfiguration easier. The cells are all identical, so during fabrication, they have no information of the deployed shape programmed into them. Let us look into two important aspects of the cell, deployment and reconfigurability. In spite of the mechanism that deploys an umbrella, a cell pushes material from out of the surface plane into it. It has two flat plates connected by vertical scissor linkages. As you bring the plates closer, the cell expands in plane. Note that the height of the cell controls how much the cell expands. Taller the cell, more is the expansion. A cell can also be reconfigured. We do this through joints that let the plates slide along the arm. During reconfiguration, we first unlock the joints, slide the plates along with the joints to the desired height, then lock the plate joints in place to fix the configuration. So if we look at a configuration at maximum available height, it deploys to a large footprint at the plane. The same cell is shown reconfigured to a shorter height, which then deploys into a smaller area. We can assemble as many of these identical cells as we want in the desired topology and resolution of choice. If we arrange identical cells in a regular grid, they just uniformly expand in plane when deployed. If we vary the heights of the cells in the same regular grid, as they deploy, since the expansion factors are not compat compatible anymore, the structure buckles into a 3D curved shape. Note that it is not a rigid mechanism anymore, but incurs active bending and settles into an elastic equilibrium. So here we have a structure that deploys into various active bending shapes depending upon the heights of the cells in the compact configuration. We can explore the design space or configuration space of a RUM by sampling the heights of the cells. Here we have a heat map of the spatial distribution of heights. This can be understood as how we want the local expansion factors on the surface to be. We use this to initialize the height configuration of the RUM. We use our physics based simulation framework to find the deployed elastic equilibrium. This enables interactive design exploration by quickly finding the deployed shape for each sample configuration. Given desired target shapes that we want to deploy to and the cell geometry that is available, our inverse design algorithm computes the topology to be assembled and the height distribution for each configuration. The computed configurations deploy into desired target shapes. 
So, how did we compute the height distributions for a desired shape? We employ surface flattening techniques from differential geometry to model the deployment transformation. In particular, we use conformal flattening. Notice that a single cell expands isotropically in plane, whose expansion factor can be computed as a function of the cell height. Conformal transformations consist of local rotations and uniform scaling, but no shearing. We have this nice relation between the spatial variation of the expansion factors with the Gaussian curvature of the surface. This also provides an idea about the shape space of rounds. The higher the local variation in expansion factors, the larger the Gaussian curvature we can express. We discretize the conformal flattening and translate the local expansion factors to cell heights. This helps us find an initial solution to the inverse design problem. While this initial solution already deploys close to the target surface, we perform numerical optimization using sensitivity analysis to optimize the fidelity to the target surface among several other objectives. Observe that the space that we optimize in is the configuration space of a RUM, and we are literally navigating through several possible deployments of the RUM towards the best fit. Notice that each iteration of this optimization requires computing the deployed equilibrium. This is because our optimization objectives are functions of the equilibrium. We want the deployed state We want the deployed state to fit to the target surface. We want to minimize its elastic energy and stresses and also minimize the constraint forces. This requires an efficient simulation framework. To efficiently yet accurately compute these equilibrium states, we use a reduced order physical simulation. Our simulation employs the discrete elastic rods model to represent the deformable means. We then couple the rods together using a hinge joint implemented by an efficient nonlinear change of variables. Finally, to model the constraint forces, we introduce a virtual linear actuator that drives the distance between the top and bottom plates to a target value. This was implemented for our previous paper jointly done with Samar Aran and a big shout out to Professor Julian Panetta. Okay, let's look at these things in action now. We start with a RUM with a uniform height distribution with all the cells at maximum height. The structure predictably deploys to a flat surface. We can undeploy this surface and reconfigure to something more interesting. We reconfigure the RAM to a height distribution obtained from the inverse design algorithm. This new configuration deploys into a dome, a surface with positive Gaussian curvature. We can undeploy it again and reconfigure it into something else. This time, it deploys into a saddle, a surface that has negative Gaussian curvature. We validate our principle for by fabricating physical prototypes. We laser cut the arms of identical lengths from palm C. The plates and the sliding joints are CNC min from polypropylene, with the joints realized through a compliant hinge. The arms can slide through the sleeves on the joints and locked in place using a screw through the detents in the arm. Reconfiguration can be done by unscrewing, sliding the arm to the desired length and screwing back. We assemble several of these units to form a physical prototype with 37 cells. We deploy the prototype into the three different shapes previously shown. RUMs also offer a different form of reconfigurability, and that is through reassembly. We take a RUM in a dome configuration and remove a few cells in the middle. The structure redeploys into a surface with a different topology. This way, RUMs simplify controlling the topology of the approximated surface. In addition, we can always reconfigure the height distribution to control the continuous geometry. This gives us a structure that is completely different in surface geometry as well as the topology from the initial dome. Thus, RUMs offer vast reconfigurability over both continuous geometry and the discrete topology of the surface. One RUM can be deployed into a large number of shapes. This portrays potential for designing circular architecture. 
we introduce the geometric principles of RUM reconfigurable deployable structure. We show fabricated prototypes to validate the principle. Practicality aside, here's a mere speculation of how a RUM can be used in a large scale architectural scenario. There's a long way to go from our physical prototypes to this concept. We have to test the structural properties of these structures on a larger scale in addition to finding the right materials that let you build them. Can reconfiguration be done in the deployed state? How do we attach a fabric to closed structure? I believe this is a great venue with researchers from diverse disciplines that can help tackle these problems. I'll be glad to discuss more about employing drums in architecture. And with that, I thank you for your time.